Hello viewers, this video is in continuation of my previous videos on the principles of green chemistry. In the previous videos, I have discussed the first six principles of green chemistry. In this video, I will be discussing the principle 7 and principle 8 of green chemistry. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe it. Now first we will see the seventh principle of green chemistry. The seventh principle of green chemistry it talks about use of renewable feedstock. The statement of this principle is a raw material or feedstock should be renewable rather than depleting whenever technically and economically practicable. Renewable feedstock. First we will see what are renewable feedstock. Today, the fossil residues they are used to supply 96% of the synthetic organic chemicals which are produced in refineries and chemical production plants. Because the depletion of fossil fuels will occur sooner or later, so renewable feedstock will be preferred resource for carbon-based chemicals in the future. So a renewable feedstock is defined as a natural resource that can replenish itself in a limited time preferably within several months, although years or at a maximum of few decades may be accepted. Other than the energy use, the main application of renewable feedstock are as a lubricant, in polymers, to make solvents, to make surfactant, to synthesize fibers, dyes, paint, to produce agrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, lignin, protein and to isolate essential some examples which are uh, chemicals which can be obtained from renewable feedstock are syngas, methanol, ethanol, lactic acid, glycerol, butanol, perfural, 5-hydroxymethyl perfural, levulinic acid, gamma valerolactone, 2 methyl tetrahydrofurane. So these are some of the chemicals which can be synthesized from renewable feedstock. First, let us understand what is biomass. All the living material, it may be considered as biomass. But commonly, only the non-animal renewable resources such as trees and crops that may be harvested for energy or as a chemical feedstock, they are referred as biomass. Nature produces about 170 billion tons of plant biomass annually, but out of which Currently, we use only about 3.5% for our needs. The technical challenge in the use of these renewable feedstock is to develop low energy, non-toxic pathways to convert the biomass to useful chemical. So, the biomass can be used for cooking and heating, transportation and for generation of electricity. Here we can see the biomass cycle. Biomass contains stored chemical energy from the sun. Plants produce biomass to photosynthesis. And the biomass source includes wood and wood processing waste, agriculture crop and waste material, biogenic materials, and animal manure and sewage. Here we will see first what is biofuel. Biofuels, they are combustible fuels created from biomass. In other words, these are fuels created from recently living plant matter. The various types of biofuel are liquid fuels such as ethanol and biodiesel, solid fuels like wood pellets and biogas or syngas which are the gaseous biofuels. These biofuels are grouped by various categories into first generation, second generation and third generation. This is based on the type of feedstock that is the input material used to produce these biofuels. The first generation biofuels, they are produced from food crops. The second generation biofuels, they are produced from cellulosic materials such as wood, grass and inedible parts of the plant. The third generation of biofuels, they are produced using the lipid production from algae. In addition to these, there is an advanced biofuel term. And these advanced biofuel, they are used to describe the relatively new technological field of biofuel production that uses waste such as garbage, 
animal fats and spent cooking oil to produce liquid fuels. Now, first we will see one of the biofuels that is the bioethanol. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that can be made from various plant materials which are known as biomass. For ethanol, the feedstock includes sugarcane, corn, maize, etc. The common method for converting biomass into ethanol that process is called fermentation. Ethanol is an alcohol used as a blending agent with gasoline to increase octane and cut down the carbon monoxide and other smoke causing emission. The most common blend of ethanol is ethan, which is 10% ethanol and 90% gasoline. So, ethanol can be used as a fuel and that is known as bioethanol. Next type of biofuel is the biodiesel. The fatty acid component of vegetable oil is used to provide renewable energy source in the form of biodiesel. Biodiesel is a liquid fuel which is produced from renewable sources such as vegetable oil, soya bean, rapeseed, sunflower seeds, palm and groundnut. It is a cleaner burning replacement for petroleum based diesel fuel. Biodiesel is non-toxic and biodegradable. Biodiesel can be blended with petroleum diesel in any percentage such as B100 which is a pure biodiesel and B20 is a blend containing 20% biodiesel and 80% petroleum diesel. The first engine which was invented by Ruttel Diesel, it ran on a biofuel groundnut oil. However, there are various issues uh, with biofuels. Uh, biofuels can lead to food shortage, rise in the price of food crops. Land growing edible crops will be diverted to biofuel crops and it will increase the palm plantation. Other type of substances which can be obtained from biomass are the lubricants. Mineral oil based lubricants are increasingly becoming environmentally unacceptable due to their low level of biodegradability and potential for causing long term damage. So, there is a need for other type of lubricants that can be obtained from biomass. So compared to the mineral oil, vegeta the vegetable oil based lubricants, they have several advantages that is they have higher lubricity, higher viscosity index, lower evaporation loss, lower toxicity and high biodegradability. Other type of chemicals which can be obtained from biomass are surfactants. There are many types of surfactants based on renewable feedstocks such as starch and sugar. The example of the surfactants are fatty alcohol epoxylates, quaternary ammonium salts derived from fatty acids and alkyl polyglucoside. The benefits of these surfactants from biomass is that they have good biodegradability, they have low toxicity. These surfactants from biomass, they are mild and they can also be used in cosmetics. Polymers are another type of chemicals which can be obtained from renewable resources. So, for example, from polyhydroxyalkylates and polylactates. These are some structures of the polymers obtained from renewable resources. Solvents can also be obtained from biomass. One such solvent is tetrahydrofurane. This THF tetrahydrofurane is produced industrially from acetylene and formaldehyde. These are fossil fuel derived starting materials. They are non-renewable. So you can see THF can be prepared from acetylene and formaldehyde by converted into butane 1,4-diol which on acid catalyte dehydration gets converted into tetrahydrofurin. Another method to uh, get THF is 2-methyl tetrahydrofurin is another alternative to this tetrahydrofurin solvent. This 2-methyl tetrahydrofurin can be synthesized from a biomass. Biomass can be converted into C5 and C6 sugars and by multiple acid catalyzed steps it is converted to levinonic acid and then on hydrogenation and dehydration is converted to 2-methyl tetrahydrofurin. So 2-methyl tetrahydrofurin is an alternative to tetrahydrofurin as a solvent and it has advantages. Uh, so let us see which is a better solvent THF or methyl THF. So 2-methyl THF is a better solvent as compared to THF because 2-methyl THF is derived from renewable resources. It has lower peroxide formation than THF. It is more easily dried than THF. It has limited miscibility with water and it can be easily separated.
It has higher boiling point than THF and less solvents loss is found during refluxing. So, we can obtain solvents from biomass which have various advantages. Now, let us come to the eighth principle of green chemistry. This principle is about reducing derivatives. This principle states unnecessary derivatization, that is use of blocking groups, protection, deprotection, temporary modification of physical chemical processes. It should be minimized or avoided if possible because such steps, they require additional reagents and they generate waste. Chemical synthesis, they require generation of molecular modification or derivative of substances needed in order to carry out various transformations. So, for that, blocking or protection groups are used, which major is essential. So, these blocking or protecting groups, they are used to protect a sensitive moiety from the condition of the reaction, which may jeopardize the functionality if it is left unprotected. So, there is need of blocking groups or protection and deprotection reagents during a chemical synthesis. However, it is if it can be reduced or unnecessary derivatization can be avoided, then it is a better option. Now, alcohol group can be protected and deprotected by various reagents. Some of the reagents are here. Uh, it can be protected using acetyl, benzoyl, benzyl, methoxymethyl ether or by converting into tridyl group. These groups can be reduced by using various reagents. There are certain groups which are used for protection of amino group. These are carbobenzoxy CBZ group, tertiary beta-aloxy carbonyl group and these groups can also be removed by various processes. Here I have shown the protection and deprotection of the keto group. Here you can see the starting material has two functionalities. One is the keto and another is the ester group. If we treat it with radial lithium aluminum hydrides, both the keto and the ester group are reduced. However, if we want to selectively reduce the keto group, uh, selectively reduce the ester group and not the keto group, then it requires protection and deprotection. So it can be done by treating it with ethylene glycol. The keto group is protected. And then using lithium aluminum hydride only, the ester group is selectively reduced and the keto group is uh, protected. On hydrolysis, then the protection group can be reduced. So, protection and deprotection is required to convert this compound into the reduced alcohol. And it cannot be done straight away by using lithium aluminum hydride. So, the eighth principle of green chemistry talks about reducing these Derivatization, if it is not necessary, we should avoid such steps. Now, how can we do it? This is only possible by using some other methods. One such method is the using enzymes for carrying out these derivatization. Enzymes are so specific that can often react with one site of the molecule alone. So, for example, during industrial synthesis of antibiotics, enzymes are used. These are some reference books for green chemistry. Uh, you can also watch my previous videos on uh, green chemistry. The various topics which have been covered in these videos are introduction to green chemistry, the principles of green chemistry, principle 1 and 2 in one video, principle 3 and 4 is in another video, principle 5 and principle 6. So all up to principle 6, I have uploaded various videos and please like and share them. Thank you.